In this video, we're going to talk about the topic of scraping. One task a data analyst often has to do is scraping. So the term scraping used to be used generically, whenever a computer program was used to extract information from a big pile of data and create human readable output. So scraping could be something like writing code to collect all the unique words from an archive of digitized books, put that into a database, make that database searchable. However, most commonly these days, the term scraping is used to refer to web scraping specifically. Web scraping involves a program called a bot, a crawler or a spider going from link to link on the web and saving all the data. There are highly sophisticated frameworks for doing this. One of the most popular Python based scrapers at the time of writing is Scrapey. So scraping can be an extremely useful way to source data and a big time saver. For example, if we're doing media analysis, say studying political polarization, we might want to collect the headline and first paragraph of every article on the news website. Going through and clicking every link by hand would be very time consuming to say the least. A web scraper would make our lives much easier and could run in the background, collecting new data as it's generated. So the law surrounding web scraping is complicated and varies from country to country. Legal cases usually involve statutes relating to fraud, that's pretending to be someone you're not in order to obtain information, trespass, being somewhere you're not supposed to be, or copyright infringement, using someone else's intellectual property for your own financial gain. To look at one example, let's take the case of Associated Press versus Meltwater. The Associated Press is a news organization whose journalists publish articles and photographs, and then which licenses those articles and photographs for a fee. Meltwater is a company offering news and social media monitoring services. At some point, Meltwater was providing AP articles to their customers. The Associated Press didn't like this and sued Meltwater for copyright infringement, with Meltwater claiming it was acting like a search engine and had implied license. A US court found in favor of the Associated Press, deciding that Meltwater had failed to satisfy the criteria for fair use of AP's copyrighted material. A very similar case was brought in the UK against Meltwater by a group called the Newspaper Licensing Agency. This is a company which manages the copyright of British newspapers, licensing other organizations to use their material, much like the AP. This time, the court found in favor of Meltwater. This court judged that because Meltwater was technically only providing links to their customers who'd read the contents themselves, this didn't violate any copyright. From these two famous cases, we can see there's no simple answer to what is and is not okay with regards to scraping. However, companies nowadays are becoming much more aware of it, especially those for whom data is their main product. Think Google, Facebook, Twitter, and even smaller companies. Some guidelines to think about are, will you be scraping any personal data? In which case, this is almost certainly not gonna be allowed. Will you be reproducing any of the core functions of the website you're scraping? This will probably result in legal action, like in the Meltwater cases. Similarly, if the website you're scraping is selling or otherwise monetizing their data, scraping is likely to draw the ire of the scrapee. Finally, before scraping, ask yourself if you really need to do it. Try not to scrape on a speculative basis. If you say, it'd be interesting to have this data, that's not really a strong argument for doing it. The last thing is that if you intend to scrape a website or a service, you should thoroughly read their terms of service. You probably agreed to dozens or hundreds of terms of service without really reading any of them. This is an example from the job advertising website monster.com. Like many terms of service, they mention scraping explicitly and tell you not to do it. This is something you need to be aware of if you intend to source data online. If you were to scrape monster.com for job adverts for use of your company, then monster.com might have a good legal case against you. A final technical note. When scraping, be aware that websites often use files called robots.txt to tell scrapers, these are typically search engine indexing bots, how to crawl their website. Specifically, they can indicate where web crawling software should or should not crawl. Obeying robots.txt is optional. Web scraping frameworks like Scrapey have options to obey or disobey the robots.txt file. There's something to be aware of. This is just an example of the robots.txt file from bbc.co.uk. Here you can see that the file indicates where XML documents that describe the structure of the website can be found. And below that is a, a very truncated list of some of the parts of the website that the BBC don't want to index on Google.